Hi everyone, so today is your introduction to economics. We're going to have a think about what economics is um, and some of the key economic issues before we then move on to look at why it's a social science and what the basic economic problem then is. Basic economic problem will run through all of the two years of your A-level course, um, so it's really important that you have a really good grasp on what the basic economic problem is. So in front of you, you have five different images, um, and what I would like you to do is just brainstorm what you think they might have to do with economics. So take a couple of minutes here, pause the video and just write down what you think they might have to do with economics. OK, awesome. Let's move on. So one of the really topical issues over the past couple of years has been the gender pay gap um, between men and women. So the BBC was accused of discrimination as they their salaries revealed there was a gender pay gap at the BBC. Um, so first thing that I would like you to do is write down what you make of that follow of that headline. And then there's another three things for you to do. So what are the causes of the gender pay gap? What are the consequences of the gender pay gap? And what are the solutions of the gender pay gap? So that should take you about five minutes. So if you pause the video here, then you can do those four different things there. And then we'll have a look at economics as a social science. So let's start to have a look at the first topic in economics, so economics as a social science. So a question here for you to think about. So if the price of Coca-Cola fell to 20p per can, would everyone buy more? Ceteris paribus. And the term ceteris paribus means all other things remaining equal. So, for example, if income stayed exactly the same, the population site stayed exactly the same, there was no extra advertising and no other offers. If the price of Coca-Cola fell to 20p per can, would everyone buy more? So jot down what you think. So if the price of Coca-Cola fell, would everyone buy more and why? And if you think some people might not buy more, why would those people not buy more? And how could Coca-Cola persuade you to buy more of their drink? What would they have to do to encourage you to buy more? of their drink. So those discussion questions there very nicely to think about sugar tax. Um, so the UK government imposed a sugar tax over the past couple of years with the intention of trying to reduce consumption. So the government should tax sugar in the UK. First of all, is that statement there a fact or is it a judgment? If you were going to argue that they should tax sugar, what factual arguments could you use? So take a minute just to pause the video here, just to jot down any factual arguments they could use. OK, so what emotional arguments could they then use to explain whether they should tax sugar in the UK? Again, just pause the video there for a minute. So you should have some factual arguments and some emotional arguments about whether the government should tax sugar in the UK. And everyone's going to have a really different um, stance on whether they should tax sugar more in the UK or not. That leads us on to the economic problem um, and economics and social science, which looks at positive and normative statements. So next time you hear a politician talk, you can then dissect the type of statements they make. So do politicians make more positive statements or more normative statements when they are talking? So a positive statement is a statement about what is and has no indication of approval or disapproval. It can be wrong, but it can also and has to be able to be tested by objective use of evidence. And the tools of positive economics are reason, logic or empiricism. So there is an example there for you of a positive economic statement. So an increase in income tax by 1% will cause an increase in tax revenue by £2 billion. That's a positive statement because it's something that can be measured. We can calculate if the government increase income tax by 1%, how does that cause tax revenue to then change? It can be wrong and it can change by a different amount than 2 billion, but it can be proven. That's why it is a positive statement. 
A normative statement, however, expresses a value judgment about whether a situation is desirable or undesirable. So, for example, the British economy would be a lot stronger if Jeff Riley was governor of the Bank of England. That's a normative statement because it gives a judgment about something that ought to be. So just a little bit of help there for you. A normative statement will include indicator words such as should, ought, um, or prefer are likely to be normative um, rather than positive statements. So the next thing you're going to do is decide which of these statements are positive and which of these statements are normative. So have a look at the statements and then next them write down positive or normative. Remember that little tip on the previous bit. And if you pause that there, that should take you about four minutes. OK, so you should have had a bit of time to decide which of those statements are positive and which of those statements are normative. So let's move on and have a look at the economic problem. So I'm going to start asking you these two questions. So what are you going to do tomorrow and what else could you do with your time? So just think about that for about 30 seconds. Problem. So resources are scared, but wants are infinite. Scarce, but but wants are infinite, which forces economic agents to make choices. So that links together scarcity, infinite wants, and choice. Which leads us on to scarcity first. So can you list ten scarce resources for economic agents? Once you've done that, think about any goods that are not scarce. So think about any goods that are not scarce. Okay, so in terms of scarcity, um, a scarce resource is a resource that is in limited supply, so for example fossil fuels. The other part of the economic problem is that um, economic agents have infinite wants. So people always want more of something. So you always want more food, a bigger house, a better environment, or more time to listen to music, as an example. And then finally, a choice um, is the final part of the economic problem. So choice is where you've got a range of alternatives. So let's just flick back to the basic economic and look at the concept of opportunity cost. So the opportunity cost is the benefit lost from the next best alternative that was given up. So, for example, if economics was your final A-level choice, your final choice you did not take up was history. The opportunity cost of studying economics A-level is the benefit you could have gained from studying history at A-level. So using that as an example, write down two, costs of two examples of opportunity cost for yourself. So that leads us on to a decision that you may be considering over the next few years, which is university education. So including living expenses, the cost of university education of a student living away from home on a three year course could cost up to £50,000. So what could the opportunity cost of the £50,000 be if it was paid for by your parents or carers or if you borrowed the £50,000? When answering the second one, then just make sure that you are considering student loan and when you'd pay that back. So you're going to do two brainstorms and what's the opportunity cost of both of those. So if you pause the video here and then we'll have a look at economic resources in a minute. OK, so let's think about economic resources. There are four economic resources um, that economic agents can choose. Um, so land is the first one. So land is natural resources on Earth. Um, so in terms of land, we're thinking about things um, that kind of grow and occur naturally. Um, in terms of labour, they are the workforce of the economy and capital. is plant machinery and equipment. Enterprise is seeking out profitable opportunities for production. So what are the different economic resources that these three businesses, NHS, Zara and Coca-Cola, could have? Let's go through an example first of all before we do that and we'll look at the NHS. So for the NHS, an example of land um, could be the glass that is used to make um, injections. Labour could be the nurses, doctors all of the other staff that work for them. Capital could be um, something like dialysis machines, which we're going to have a look at as well. An enterprise could be um, creating new drugs. 
So what you're now going to do is for NHS, Zara and Coca-Cola, you're going to add all of the other economic resources that you can think of for those businesses. So if you pause the video here, that should take you about 10 minutes. OK, so you should have a really good idea about some examples for those. Let's give you a couple. So in terms of land for Zara, you could have had um, cotton that's used to make their um, goods. For Coca-Cola, in terms of land, you could have had sugar, water. For labour, for both of them, um, you could have had people working in the production plants. For enterprise, the creation of new products. So for Coca-Cola, it could have been Coca-Cola Life. For Zara, it could be any new product that they've been created. So let's think about the NHS. Um, the NHS has to make tough choices about what it offers to patients. Fact. Using all of these key terms that we've looked at today, what I would like you to do is explain why they have to make tough decisions about what it offers to patients. So using the terms opportunity cost, stand, labour, capital, enterprise, choice and scarcity, why does the NHS have to make tough decisions? So it just needs to be a couple of sentences and that should take you a couple of minutes as well. So pause the video here. So that's the end of today's introduction to economics. We've had a look at the economic problem um, and why economics is a social science. So thank you very much for watching today.